Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting list video here at Playing Board Games. If this is your first time here, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We release a new Arkham Horror video every day of the week uh, with a list video every Thursday. And if you want quality, there's no better quality than this. The 10 best items for Bob Jenkins to give away. I realize I should probably get Bob Jenkins on the screen here. Do I have? I don't have him saved on this computer. This is a great look for the channel. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, no. Yeah, he's got to be in I here. I figured that opening was going to end if, with if you want quality, then you're in the wrong place. Yeah. And here is Big Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so Bob, he cares about item assets, and one thing that he can do with his signature is that he can play items from his hand under the control of other players. Is that correct, Bryn? You're the Bob expert on the channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, It also makes them cost one less for what it's worth. That is it's always uh, sick. Resource reduction? Which, yeah. There's, but, a, there's a lot of items in this game that become really good when they cost half as much or are free. Heck yeah. Uh, we're here not caring about the resource costs, though. We're just trying to give you the best 10 items for you to consider if you're playing Bob and if you're playing with one of these people, think, hey, maybe I'll make their day and give them something that just busts their game wide open or is just kind of amusing. That's also the, the what Bryn and I had in mind here. So let's dive in, start going through our lists, which our first one here is Mariner's Compass and Harvey Walters. But this is really like any seeker that's not Rex or Min because they can already run Mariner's Compass. So why why is this nice? Uh, why is this a nice gift for a seeker, Bryn? Well, if you got if you have no resources in your resource pool, then the action ability on Mariner's Compass gives you an extra clue, which is like a free deduction every turn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and if there's something that I know about yellow characters, is that they want to play as many deductions as they can in a game. It's true. That's that's their goal. And not having any resources. I mean, like, yellow cards are broken. Yeah. You can, like, they don't need money. They don't. And even then, you can just spend your money on a broken yeah. card and then be like, let's go. Yeah. Or even just spend it on the lightning bolt ability on this Mariner's Compass to juice up your yeah your book score for a difficult investigation or something like that. It's like one of those things where, like, you get to a location and it's like, I have six shroud and some sort of crazy thing you need to do. And you say, well, I already have six six book. I'll bump it up to nine, pass the test, grab two clues, and get the heck out of here. <laughs> yeah. And, like, yes, sir. even if, like, because Bryn's talked about it on this channel before, but Rex and Mariner's Compass, a Dark Horse Rex is really good. But even if you're, the teammate is playing Rex and uh, you just buy this for them and give it to them, <laughs> They're basically playing an upgraded deduction with their ability now, if their resource pool is empty. Wow. That's a lot of clues. That's a lot of clues. I'm not even sure I can count that high. No, I could. I get. I mean, I yeah. didn't even have a Bob Jenkins ready, so I can't do anything. I, <laughs> my pants and shirt are currently on backwards right now. I cut a little hole in here because I didn't <laughs> just, want to. Just so that it wouldn't look silly. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, our next gift is a level two backpack for Diana Stanley. But likewise, um, this can kind of fit for any investigator that needs to find certain things that they might not be running stuff themselves. So Bryn, this was also one that you put on. So I'll throw this one to you too for, for this yeah. one. Yeah, so the reason that this is paired with Diana Stanley is because if you've ever played Diana, you know that the game is very different when you have your Twilight Blade as opposed to a game that you play where you do not. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, 12 cards, you get to look at 12 cards to find the Twilight Blade. And odds are good that you're probably not playing enough items to justify this yourself, or are spending your experience on events that cancel things. So maybe this isn't a priority. Mm -hmm. However, um, I will say Backpack is kind of just cool, almost no matter who you give it to. Yeah. You give it to your guardian and you're like, hey, you want, you want some extra guns and or supplies or whatever? That's cool. They're in the bag. Yeah, I do love that Like, if you give the backpack to another person, it's Bob being like, I packed your favorite <laughs> yeah. things already in the backpack for you. You're good. Yeah. I knew these were your favorite goldfish, these pretzel and cheddar ones. <laughs> those are. They are. That's why there's a package of those in the <laughs> backpack. Uh, one thing, too, about backpack is... Um, 
Well, a lot, a lot of the items on this list can like work for Bob. This one just kind of universally will fit in any Bob deck because mm -hmm. I, I imagine you run items in your Bob deck. It seems like a good thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Like you probably want to play this in your Bob deck anyway. Yeah. So it's not really a whole huge leap out of your way to be giving this to somebody that might make uh, might make their game run a whole lot better. Just don't tell them uh, that. Be like, I bought, I yeah. got this specifically for you. Yeah. <laughs> Because it also works for you, yeah. right? Like you can you could throw this out and be like, "Look, I got two things of bandages that are like toilet paper, <laughs> and another thing." That is really what Bob pulls out of the backpack. Huh? Other people are a little <laughs> bit more impressive than what Bob pulls out of his. He's like, "Here's a magazine to buy toilet paper," and they're like, "Cool, Bob. Cool. <laughs> that's that's great." Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Uh, next thing we got here is Tennessee Sour Mash and Preston Fairmont. So you might be thinking, Preston's green. He can already play Tennessee Sour Mash, but no. Preston has a bit of a problem uh, where he's too much of a stickler to break the rules. So he can't play illicit items uh, or illicit cards in general. Uh, and now this is something that when we, Brent and I were coming through and looking at all of our options, we thought, hey, we should find an illicit item that Preston Fairmont could use. And the real the real answer is like none of them. Like Liquid Courage level, like the upgrade of one could work, right? It's some good healing. Um, but this one also is just, it allows him to attack at four and uh, take treachery cards at four. It's actually a pretty nice gift for uh, Preston. But what's most important is this allows Bob to be a bad influence on Preston and have him, you know, have some... Tennessee Sour Mash. Be like, it's okay, Preston, have a drink. Yeah. It's, it's literally him holding the drink up and be like, Preston, have a drink with me. And then <laughs> Preston's like, okay, okay, I will. <laughs> All right. Next one we got here is the Red Clock and Mandy Thompson. So I put this one on the list, and it's pretty simple. You should pair extremely powerful cards with extremely powerful cards. So a Mandy Thompson with the red clock seems pretty crazy in theory. Like just a Mandy Thompson like who can take five actions seems kind of good. She also <laughs> probably has some stuff built in with uh, the guy who, the Eldritch Sophist who plays chess and he cheats and he tries to get away with it, right? She might have, um, yeah, like does, or does Ariadne's Twine do charges, or is that just secrets? I'm going to look it up right I now. I honestly don't know. It's a yellow card, so I figure I'll probably learn no, how to play it. Twine just does, it. just does secrets. But the Eldritch Sophist yeah. can move charges around. Okay. So Mandy could probably get up to some pretty gross things with a broken <laughs> but reliable clock, because that's how we also describe Mandy Thompson. She's broken but incredibly reliable. This is the truth. This is the truth. Even allows so, her to have five fists. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, like, you're playing this, and the other person on your table is playing Mark Harrigan, and you just, like, keep feeding Mandy, we like, green weapons. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> looking at Mark Harrigan, like, what are you going to do about it? That's actually the funniest thing to picture in my head. Just Mark being like, I have a gun. And then Mandy's just like, with the fucking M1918, just <laughs> blah, 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 just mowing things down. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> this would also, with our One Punch Mandy deck, this would work really well um, for Bob Jenkins to gift her this and that, too. Mm -hmm. Just turn her into Five Punch Mandy. Incredible. All right, let's see what Bob's next gift is. Lockpicks. For Rita Young. So, Bryn, why is this a nice gift for Rita? Well, you see, the main downside to playing Rita is that you don't do anything. Uh, pretty much. Like, you run. You run good. Mm -hmm. But uh, that doesn't actually get you any closer to winning. Lockpicks lets you take your foot stat, which is really big, five, and use it for an effect that will get you closer to winning the game. And sure, you've got to succeed by at least two, but you've got two base book. So it's kind of just like it lets you investigate with your foot. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, there's really not much more to say for this one. It's just a good gift for Rita Young. She'll love it. Once again, <laughs> she'll love it. Showing that Bob Jenkins is not a good influence. It's like, here, commit these <laughs> crimes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Bob. All right, Brent, we have Precious Memento from a future life in Harvey Walters. So this is the Precious Memento, which important is here, is for after you succeed a skill test by two or more exhausted to heal one damage from it. So why are we, why did uh, we have this one for this and Harvey in particular, Brent? Well, this, this one in particular, because it heals damage on success, is very strong in yellow investigators who can't normally play it because, you know, how, how do you die when you're playing yellow? you take too much damage mm -hmm. um, and uh, this one negates one damage every time you succeed a test by two or more how often are you not succeeding your investigation test by two or more because you know it's probably going to happen like once a turn ish maybe not quite that frequently so this will help keep you alive for a very long time and also, Harvey Walters sometimes just, like, looks at his top card and has a heart attack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's all, oh! Yeah. My thrice-dabbed curiosity! Yeah. <laughs> and this helps mitigate the risk of that as well. Mm -hmm. If you pair this with the Harvey Walters, who also got the Mariner's Compass, he's definitely succeeding a test by two or more. If he's not succeeding a test by two or more, then you definitely get to, fit, like, maybe not physically abuse him, but, like, verbally... Yeah. across the table because yeah. you've spent all of your experience and resources giving him stuff to succeed and you're not once again you're abusing harvey so don't make fun of other player players but like veil it through harvey be like it's like when we say like when travis gets mad at leo for turning into a tree and dropping his gun on the ground it's leo we're happy here playing board games we don't fight don't pay attention that travis isn't here he's not still <laughs> mad about it it's okay it's Leo. <laughs> uh, next one here is we got Calvin Wright in the Eye of the Dijin. So this is when you initiate a skill test during your turn, you exhaust Eye of the Dijin to set your base skill value to five for this test. Everything else doesn't matter for this gift. Um, it could actually, it actually matters a lot because Calvin Wright is probably one of the best uses with Spirit of Humanity to uh, uh, get <laughs> yeah. these tokens in there. So it actually yeah. does matter quite a bit. So, if a blessed token is revealed during this test, ready it. If a cursed token is revealed, you take an additional action this turn. Uh, so, this sets your base value, which pressed... Uh, so, with Calvin's ability, he gets to increase his stats by the damage and horror on him. So, this means you get 5 plus the damage on you, because your base stat is 0. Um, so, that's kind of wild. It seems kind of really yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe maybe one day we'll have to play a to play a deck where we sell Calvin the Eye of the Jinn and uh, also sell him the Sawn-Off Shotgun. Oh, let's go! Yeah, we can do that. Because <laughs> Calvin's all about comically large numbers. <laughs> yeah, that sounds fun. That sounds like a fun time. Yeah. And I know you're not looking. You're 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 not hard pressed to play Bob. Hmm? Oh, no, I could actually, I am, in fact, might play him every time that I get there. <laughs> uh, I just love, like, it's like, uh, Travis is like, okay, I'll get clues, and I'm like, all right, I'll fight enemies, and you're like, I'll be Bob. <laughs> I'll, I'll do a different thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll be there, and I'll be buying everyone toilet paper. This seems sick, though, this uh, Kelvin, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I yeah. like that. You no. should definitely do that. That's a great idea. In a perfect world. You're also playing with someone who's playing, like, Paradoxical Covenant. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so then you can reveal both tokens in a test very, fairly reliably. I, I don't think uh, it would be hard to convince Travis to do that, because he could just, he's he's probably been itching to play Father Mateo, so we could just get him in there. Yeah. Well, this card is also blessed, and you could just play it in Father Mateo, which is kind of wild. That is kind of wild. Uh, is it good? I, we, don't, we don't ask those questions here. Yeah, yeah. You just could do it. Sounds you could fun. also play it in Ursula. Although I don't think it's very good because your numbers that you want to use are already very high. They're already good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sick. All right. Uh, yeah, but this, this is a... You'll see that one day on the channel for sure. I'm. I, it's, that's going to happen. 
Um, that's but a that's, PBG guarantee. And those those do happen, even if it takes us a few years. The grief and run eventually did happen. <laughs> uh, next gift here is this one's nice and simple. Leo Anderson and the decorated skull that everyone wishes he could play. So he can only do Rogue 0 to 2, which means the decorated skull zero, level 3 is just slightly out of reach. This one's really sick because after an investigator, ally, asset, or enemy or location is defeated, you place one resource on it as a charge. And you also, as an action, get to spend up to three charges to draw that many cards and gain that many resources. I just wish Leo could play this normally, but luckily Bob can make that a reality. Oh, man. Uh, so idea for the, the Madhouse, we're going to build a deck where we're playing Trish Scarborough and we're playing Decorated Skull in the Red Clock. And oh, okay. uh, the level zero... Um, the sophist? Guy who cheats a chest, yeah, yeah. the elder sophist. Yeah, that's <laughs> just a our charges around. That's just that's even not even that mad. That's just like a good deck. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe. I'll write it down though. But no, you'll add some sort of thing. But like, we can only do cards that <laughs> rhyme with green. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about only skin. cards with an uneven number of words in the title. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the Yigroth or whatever it is? This is you're just the yeah. mayor of Yigroth right now. <laughs> All right, that has been written down. I'll put it on the notepad later. Yeah. But yeah, this one's nice and simple. Leo wants to drink from the Death Skull. Yeah, this is just a better Death Skull. I'm still sad that Travis wasn't able to drink me from the skull when he was Akachi. <laughs> that would have been so sick. Oh, that's my dream. Oh, I I do love how it places a resource on it when an investigator is defeated, as if that's a thing that you might ever want to happen. Yeah. No, the only the only reason it's there is because they were like. They were like doing it and they were like, wouldn't it be funny if I drank you? I mean, they, they don't use the lingo we do, but I imagine they also yeah. do sometimes. Like, wouldn't it be funny if I drank you from the skull? And they're like, let's make it so you can drink players from the skull. <sighs> All right, what's Man, our next I should, have played, I should have played that card in the griefing run. <laughs> just as like an <laughs> omen, you just put it down and you're like, this is, this is going to be you. <laughs> this is for you. Yeah. Uh, next up here, we got Crystallizer of Dreams, the Bryn Special, and Nathaniel Cho. Uh, why is this nice here, Bryn? Oh, man. So Nathaniel Cho's spirit events, almost all of them commit for sweet icons. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to commit them because you've got to play them in order to make him do something that isn't just have five punch and be very boring. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Crystallizer lets you do both. You just normally don't have access to this unless you want to put a versatile in your deck, in which case, like, that's probably a lot worse than just having Bob pay zero to put it into play for you. Yeah. The only yeah. downside of this one is that Bob has to run it as part of his zero, like his five. Yeah, that's fine. He'll, I mean, he does only get three of them because two of them have to be Faustian bargains. <laughs> it's true. And you only need to run a one of Crystallizer if it's a gift, <laughs> right? So... Correct me if this, someone in YouTube will probably best clarify this, but um, because Bob plays the card, the crystallized, the, the guardians go in his deck, right? Yeah. I mean, probably because he, like, he's the one who played it. Yeah. And it's an additional cost. Yeah. To put yeah. the card into that's, play. That's what I'm thinking. So too. it happens, like, it happens before the crystallizer is in play, right? Yeah, because it's a conditional cost. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine so. Yeah, I just like to imagine that, like, then... Because <laughs> they go to your location exhausted and, like, Bob's somewhere else. And, like, it's just, like... It's, like, N like Nathaniel Cho doesn't even need to think about it for, like, turns. He's like, okay, this is even less of a worry. Even though he'll upper uppercut those jellyfish into space, no problem. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah, it's their own fault for not having a skeleton, you know. Man, I... I love this image in my head where like the guard, like the guardians, like finally close in on Nathaniel Cho, and Nathaniel Cho just like counter punches him before he can attack. <laughs> he just like see ya, <laughs> and then he puts that in the jellyfish egg. Oh, that's a great. Yeah. Yeah. This is why, like, when people talk about like how the game is like. Uh, th this game is a comedy game first and foremost i think because these situations are just so over the top that i love the hell out of them <laughs> yeah. speaking of situations that are over the top bryn what our last gift here is something we've seen on the channel what do we got here oh man it's the forbidden kung fu technique mm -hmm. uh, where you just shoot them in the chest with a shotgun <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so Lily Chen has uh, some weird deck building rules regarding disciplines that allow her to do different things. However, we're only here to talk about one of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that one of them is probably the punch one, I think, that uh, allows you to break it to get plus five to your next test. Yeah. Uh, which is a big number, and also not quite the number that the sawed-off shotgun cares about, but uh, cares about a lot of a lot of punch. Wants you to have a big, big stupid punch number, and uh, nine is pretty big. It is. And then you just blast that boss <laughs> out of here. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can end a game pretty quick when your weapon deals six damage. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Beautiful. I and mean, we've seen this one happen. This actually, Travis oh, and yeah. Bryn are doing this on our uh, Edge of the Earth run that will finish someday. For people who are wondering, people sometimes ask. The answer is yes. It's a PPG guarantee. We just don't know when that's going to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it'll, be, it'll be sometime. Yeah, yeah. 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 So if you want to see that in action, it's already happened, so you can go watch those episodes already. I can't believe Travis wasn't upset with the idea. No. Like, this is one of the jankiest things I think I've ever played in my deck. Like I can't I can't use a sawed off shotgun for anything. I have three punch and no way to make it better. <laughs> yeah, like it's basically just a card like this it's a card that doesn't do anything until you draw your signature. Pretty much. And it costs five experience, too. There was a big commitment. <laughs> oh, yeah. You only have one in your deck, yeah. right? Or do you have two? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I spent uh, I spent the first set of experience that I had on the red clock, and I figured it doesn't matter what I did after that. Yeah, that's very, that's very fair. Yeah. Um, yeah. Clock is kind of broken. Yeah, if you draw... I'm convinced if you draw it on turn one, you will not lose. Probably not. I mean, like, you could if you try. Yeah, like if you just pass all your actions, you will. But if you just try to play the game, you're going to win if clock's on out in turn one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a strong card. Let's see what the patrons say. They have two answers. One is, uh, for, this is from Harrison. We have the skeleton key to your the beat stick or your goon. It gives them something to do to be able to potentially investigate or help others. And then any feed items for Rita to make her better. Lock picks or 25 automatic. Yeah, very fair. Good gifts. Good gifts. Um, thank you so much for everyone who's watching. Uh, do you have any fun Bob gift stories? We would love to see them. Because remember, a giving Bob is a good Bob. Bob is not selfish. Bob just cares about love and presence. He's, he's Santa Claus. We have video proof of that as well. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.